you probably guess that those are the years when I was a whole born atheist, you know, I just let God people everything and just me. Right? So I started coming back to church with my sister and stuff like that. And I remember, gentlemen, I woke up, uh, you know, I drove across country, I woke up in a bunk bed at my sister's house the next morning with my little nieces and nephews jumping up and down going, Uncle Joseph, Uncle Joseph. And the day before I was in complete darkness. Mm -hmm. God brought me into pure light, innocence, beauty, joy. I barely could recognize what, what are these things. I hadn't tasted them in so long. Maybe that's you. So I'm going to church, and then during the week, guess what I'm doing? Looking at porn. Let my imagination run. I know there's young kids in here. Young boys. How old are you? Nine. Nine? You. Birthday coming up, guys. Thirteen. Thirteen? All right, you're right in that age. Excellent. God put you in this room. Okay? Uh, most of us were exposed to porn about what age? Their age. Their age. <laughs> that age. Gentlemen, I'm going to treat you like adults. Do I have your permission? Yeah? Okay. Have you been exposed to porn yet? Okay. Gentlemen? Yeah? Okay, thank you for the honesty. Have you seen porn yet? Online anywhere? Yes? Thank you for your honesty. Okay. That's not to signal them out. They are us. You get that? We are them. 20 years out. These are your sons. These are your grandsons. You're in this place of hurt and broken and woundedness and you've closed off everybody. And you won't let them in. Is that what you want for your sons and grandsons? Gentlemen, I'm going to teach you a three word definition for leadership. Leadership means simply, you go first. <laughs> you go first. Go where, Joseph? Go in. Then go up. You gotta face this. You gotta face the woundedness, the hurts, the brokenness. People used you, they hurt you, they betrayed your trust. Stop putting on the mask of I got it. We started out the conversation. It's not working. How many more years do you need evidence? It's not working. If you can't relate to what I'm saying, just bear with us. I will get to your control freak. <laughs> I promise. Oh, yeah, thank you. Control freak. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just All right. Power ship. That was a double. <laughs> 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 <That was something>. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> Wow, that's impressive. <laughs> Stay away from me. You're, you're very honest. You're very honest. <laughs> oh, I'm going up every morning. I'm not going up. He goes, I, I got boots onto my new balance. <laughs> all right, all right. Porn led to sex, okay? And a lot of it, all right? Again, not glorifying the sin, just being real with you, gentlemen, okay? I'm letting you in. Why? Because I'm going first. You want to be a man? You want to see what masculinity looks like? You go first. It's not more complicated. Spiritual leader of your home. You go to all these conferences and events and church every Sunday, and then pastor's like, okay, here's the Bible, boom, 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 boom. And you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, I resonate with that. That's cool. Great message, Pastor. High five. Bam. And then 
and then you go home and you let your wife leave. What the F is that? Is that leadership? But Joseph, my wife's really spiritually mature. <laughs> Much more than me. So like, leadership is also humility, Joseph. So I'm giving over my control <laughs> to her. <laughs> you lying little control freak. <laughs> No, you're not. You're holding on to control. So you can still control something over here. You're not going to let yourself be exposed. You're not going to show your wife and kids your wounds. You're not going to let them know what you've been through. How's it working for you? Porn and sex is where you're headed or you're stuck in. Bible verse. But where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder in every evil practice. Let me say the last part. There, in your heart, gentlemen, you find disorder in every evil practice. How many here is read? How many who is wrestling something evil in their life right now? Thank you. All right, look around. Keep your hand up for a second, please. Look around. Is there anyone else wrestling? There's a big lie out there that the enemy whispers in your ear. You're alone. You're the only one going through this. There's obviously something wrong with you. You're a piece of crap. Oh, God saved everybody else, not you. He can't redeem you. You've done too much wrong. Anyone? Heard of the self talk? Yep. Thank you. It's a lie. The self doubting man. This is where many of you are gonna, in this room are stuck right now. I do. Stops trying. He doesn't know how to win anymore. He's the guy in crisis. That like porn and sex. Well, it led to addiction. Now he's stuck. He wants out, but he can't. There's chemical stuff going on now. He's wrestling. Addiction, bondage, alcohol, porn, sex, manipulation, control freak. Because in a control freak, he says, what's the point? What's the point? I've been wrestling this for years. What's the point? Who relates? Okay? We all have different sins in this room, no? No one is better. We're all broken messes. I'm just giving you permission to say it out loud. Who wants to say I'm a broken mess? You notice I didn't tell you to say that. I asked. Who wants to? I've always been a broken mess. <laughs> Your heart knows what you want. The problem is, most of us live where? In our heart or in our? That's where all the chaos is. Where does God, Jesus himself, say he lives in man? In the heart or in the head? Where? In our heart. Then why are you in your head? Yeah! Thank you, that was honest. It's safe. It's safe. I don't have to go in and meet myself. I don't like that guy. Are we getting to it? We're excavating, aren't we? With my spiritual coaching clients, very successful businessmen and women, and we excavate, and I, I talk about God wants to come into your heart and rototiller the soil. How many of you have used a rototiller? All right, some sharp blades. <laughs> Why do you need a rototiller? What's going on in the soil? It's hard. It's hard. Is your heart, has your heart become stone? Life has kicked you one too many times. You're beat up. 
Life hurts, guys. Admit it. You don't have to keep wearing this mask of, oh, I'm a man, I got this, man. Paul, you're like walking with 52 limps. Everyone sees it but you. You got bullets in you. What's the point? Spiritually misaligned his priorities. His number one priority, comfort. Gentlemen over 50, <coughs> this is you. Not everyone. Am I off? Am I off? Am I not off? <laughs> I'm not off. You won't admit I'm on. It's a little control for you. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you you're right, because then what am I? <laughs> None of us want to admit what? We're wrong. <laughs> It's like saying love the first time to a girl. <laughs> I don't want to admit I'm wrong. Neither do you. That's why I gave you those secret hack questions in the beginning. You don't have to admit you're wrong. Just ask yourself the two questions. Which what? Is it working? Is it, working? Is it, working? Is it not working? Mm -hmm. There's no wrong making. But it gets right to it, doesn't it? That's my energy. I know some of you guys over 50, you're like, this guy's way too high energy. <laughs> I'm exhausted. <laughs> watching him just move. Like, move. Wow, what the heck is wrong with <laughs> Gentlemen, the, let me tell you what's not working in your life. You're not moving anymore. You forgot how to do this thing called motion. Why? What's the point? What's the point? I'm a good man. I lead a good life. I'm retired. I got the nest day. I don't know why he just did that. <laughs> why did? You know, why did I just do that? Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, you know that's that's where you that's where I am. Yeah. Got it. Is it working? Great. Nah. <laughs> One delay. I invite you to take off the mask today, gentlemen. Your life will shift if you, when you leave this room if you take off the mask and just leave it right here. There's obviously three empty seats for a reason. They're for your mask. <laughs> leave them right here. Right? Me too. All right, so sex addiction, it got to the point, gentlemen, I was raised by a Marine, man. I had no addiction in my life. I was very proud of it. Addiction was for weak men. So I saw him. What the heck is wrong with these guys, man? Alcoholism, sex addiction, porn addiction, like, that's weak. That was my control freak. I was disciplined. I was raised military. It's how do you do? You just, something's out of whack, you handle that, man. That's the target. You take it out. Anyone? And then God allowed me to experience addiction for the first time in my life. Mine was sex addiction. One too many of them. Okay? Again, we're not glorifying the sin or anything like that, but we're being real. Gemma, it got to such a point of brokenness. I had girls rotating, right, and, and just using five full-time girlfriends for two years. I was honest with all of them. They all knew I was with other girls. But that hurt, wounded girl inside of them that had all that dysfunction from childhood, hurt, and wounds in life mm -hmm. was attracted to the hurt, wounded little boy in me. Right. So they tolerated it. And I justified it. Well, they used their free will, so we're all good. All right, see you at church on Sunday. Some of the girls were at church on Sunday. Mm -hmm. That's where I met them. Mm -hmm. Then in the picture, mm -hmm. I was wearing masks, gentlemen. I'm a mm -hmm. professional. My life was mediocrity. Mediocrity. You get it? He's like, <laughs> who does this for mediocrity? Like, <laughs> But I get what you're saying. It's like, I, I get it. I relate. If you're wondering why you don't feel that aliveness, that joy, it's because you won't go inside and get, give God the, the scalpel and say, Father, take out the bullet. 
I don't know where it is. I can't find it. I can't do it myself. But I need you to go in. There's something off. I just know it. Why? Because it's not working. That's your evidence. I'm going to skip that, that other part then. The self-doubting man. Bible verse. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be open. So if you're a self-doubting man, then you are a self-doubting man. God says right here, ask, seek, knock. Is he a liar? It's not how you're living. Do you believe him? Come on, get real. This is a men's conference. You want to believe. That's helpful. But then you stopped. You didn't go past wanting. Ask, seek, knock. Gentlemen, you're stuck in one of those three. Which is it? Ask? You've been asking? Okay, but you haven't been what? Seeking. What's an action you could take this week to seek? Come on, your heart knows. I'm just gonna bring it up again. Yeah. Where are you looking for? Surrender. Surrender. Let me clarify something. As men, we do not like the word surrender. Why? It's giving over control to another. It's defeat. It's retreat. It's run. It's right. I lost. We don't want to lose. We don't want to be wrong. That's in the physical realm, gentlemen. That's surrendering the physical realm. The enemy's been lying to you. That's not what surrender means in the spiritual realm. You ready? Surrender in the spiritual realm means Father. I give the rest of my life to you. Fill in all the brokenness. Heal all the woundedness. I don't even know where to start. It's too much. Take over my life. Mean it. Here's the part. Now, so a few of you have done this, I'm guessing. Here's the part that we miss. Ready? We come over here. But not too close to him because he has the force to do it. <laughs> You've surrendered to God, some of you gentlemen. But then you forgot the second step. Believe he actually will. Let's be real. I don't believe. It's for other guys, not for me. So I wore the mask of pretending I'm doing and following God when in fact I'm still resisting and rebelling. Yeah. But really, <laughs> thank you. That's honest. And he said, that's me. Something is stirring inside of you. The Holy Spirit is turning the soil right now, gentlemen. If this is getting a little too personal, <laughs> uncomfortable, confronting, that is your evidence that God is in working on your heart. Some of you, he's got a rotor tiller. He's like, boom, boom. He's revving that baby, right? Others, he's got one of those the construction guys at the drills, right? <laughs> right? Jackhammer. He's ready with a jackhammer. And maybe this one guy in here, he's got a little pig shovel. Yeah, this is very cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's you. <laughs> Some guys need dynamite. That's right. Spiritual dynamite. Will you say that prayer? 
Will you say, Father, I surrender to you my life, the rest of it, everything. By the way, here's what it looks like, masculinity, and I'm going to wrap up here. I'm going to say it because I've got some promises to make here. The self-saved man, moving on. He has a performance-based relationship with God. He believes God only loves him when he performs well. Who relates? Thank you. And the counter, God does not love me when I mess up. He secretly doesn't believe in the unconditional love of God, but he shows up every Sunday and says he does. But he doesn't live that way. So does he? Yes or no? No. His inner control freak says, I'm too broken to God, for God to forgive me. Gentlemen, that's your inner control freak wussing out. That's not a masculine statement. That's female. I know this was audio recorded, so <laughs> someone's not going to like that. <laughs> I'm too broken for God to forgive. No, you're just acting like a wuss. God's promise just says, no one's too broken. He's God. Stop playing it. He attempts spiritual perfectionism, but keeps falling short. Punishes himself. Won't let go of shame and guilt from his past mistakes. Refuses to let God in, heal him. Instead, tries to earn his salvation. By doing good. Some of you gentlemen are part of ministries. You're doing really good stuff. You never let God take out the bullet. You know why? Because it's easier to help someone else go to God and take out their bullet than it is for you to face your own mess. Is it not? Oh yeah. There's something to that. Like you just, you know, just make it up randomly, right? It applies to us. So gentlemen, this is what's missing in your life. We're getting to it. We're right there. Okay, we got four minutes left, by the way. That's it. No, we don't. We got more than that. Praise God! I just got time. I see you good. I made a mistake. We finished at noon. Right. Thank you. I like you, man. <laughs> I like you too. <laughs> Very romantic. All right, here we go. Spiritually aligned in his priorities. Number one, guilt. That's who he worships. Or shame. Pick your word. Then God, then him. How do we know? Because he still lives in that past. His past mistakes is it's a mess. You won't let God take it. He holds it. He's this. Uh, you remember the, uh, what's the what's the movie with the little goblin dude and he's like, my precious. Lord, 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 Lord. Yeah. Thank you. I knew the movie, but I wanted your control freaks to get something right. <laughs> Just say it. Awesome. All right. So Gollum, my precious. Gentlemen, are you holding on to your woundedness, your bullets, as your precious? Meanwhile, you're dying on the inside. I don't know. I'm just sharing it. This is me. So I ended up getting real busy for God. Yes. Um, but but before I, I went there, I went and, and some. I got to wrap this real fast. But uh, on the previous slide, it's a daily holy hour. So. I was such a mess at this point. I'm going to church on Sunday, but then I'm falling into sex addiction. I don't even know what's happening, that I'm getting addicted, etc. right? I'm just using and abusing and doing all this stuff. And then um, one of my buddies, my Christian buddies, new friends in Tampa, he said, hey, you want to come to this, uh, this, this uh, worship event? I'm like, no, thanks. I got better things to do. I'm rebuilding, man. Like, I'm the guy. And he says... Exactly what my inner control freak wanted to hear. He said, there'll be a hundred single pretty girls there. I was like, what time? <laughs> I showed up. It was a worship event, right? They did music, ministry, everything. It was at my Baptist brother's church, right? He was a Baptist guy. And they're worshiping and doing all this stuff. And the speaker that night, they have a once a month speaker, turns out it was that night, is a billionaire. Well, that got my business here. I'll listen to a billionaire all day long. 
Well, he shared his story, how he surrendered after he did the first half of his life for his own glory. Then he gave it all to God and gave God the rest of his life. How he prays in his board meetings in a billion-dollar corporation, mind you. And questions go out like, well, do you work with all the Christians? No, I got atheists, agnostics, pick your flavor. They're all around me. They're in the boardroom. Well, what about, like, their feelings? He's like, it's my company. <laughs> I mean, God the CEO, he runs the company, that's what's so. You don't like it, don't work here. You're not forced to do anything, it's your choice. But here's what I'm gonna do. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Did you know you could do that with your businesses, John? I didn't. That was the first time I ever heard of a term, marketplace ministry. Marketplace ministry. What the F is that? I'm a business guy. That sounded interesting. Well, he shared. He invited me to one of his uh, young men's groups, study groups. I said, okay, I'm in. You're a billionaire. I just want to be around you. Right? God knows how to put this. God uses ordinary things and divinizes it and makes them extraordinary. Would you consider yourself ordinary? God wants to use you. Ordinary things. Broken things. Why? Because then there's a really good chance you're not going to take the glory. And even if you did, when God works through you and multiplies your life, nobody's going to believe it was you. Right. They're like, I remember when you were that broken mess. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So you are the number one draft pick. <laughs> For God. The more broken you are, the more they're scouting you, man. All of heaven is scouting you. All right, so I got busy, right? And uh, oh, they challenged me to go spend an hour a day with God in silence. I'm like, that's right. I learned that as a Catholic growing up. We just, you know, did our group prayers, right? And litanies and all this other stuff. What are you talking about? Joseph, the father wants to pour his identity into you. You have the wrong identity. You built up this false identity called business, success, pleasure. Those are your gods. God wants you to kill them so that he can make you a new creation and give you your real identity as what? Son of yes, son of the father. Jesus came for two reasons, gentlemen. Most of us stop at Jesus. What? I, oh, what? Let me, let me get clear here. Because at first blush, sounds like my theology is off. Most of us stop at Jesus and don't go past. Jesus came for two reasons, he told us. What? The first one, to save us from our sins. Sin. And the second, to show us the the Father. Jesus went first. He's the leader. He said, go through me to him. Don't stop at me. Many of us don't go through the doorway of Jesus to the Father to experience his unconditional love, to fill all the wounds from our childhood. This is what's broken, John. Your relationship with the Father is missing. Do you see that? Do you get that? Maybe you're saying, well, I have a relationship with Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and the Father. Got it. Well, if something's still not working in you or in your life, there's more healing to be done. Go spend time with the Father. So I did. And they challenged me to spend an hour a day with God in silence. And, and here was the big thing. Uh, that was so confronting. Joseph, stop talking when you pray. It's like, what? It's the only way I know to pray. Hmm. Yeah, but is it working? Well, no. All right, so do you want to change your approach? Well, that sounds logical. What should I do? Stop talking. Well, what's left? Listen. I truly believe 
that what we have to say to God really doesn't matter near as much as what God has to say to us. Who here agrees? Why? What do you really want to hear from God? Like, be real. About you, about your life. What do you want to hear from God? What? I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. Well done. Well done. This is what I want for you. This is, the, here's the plan. The three burning questions in all humanity. Who am I? Why am I here? What am I meant to do? Those are the questions. You want the answer? Go sit with the Father in silence. So I did it, and uh, it was the most painful two weeks of my life. <laughs> sure enough. Like to sit there and quiet, be in a control freak, gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Who's got plans and work and business and all and rebuilding stuff? Like, oh my gosh. But anyone can learn this if you don't quit. So here's my challenge to you. Who three again? Who am I? Who am I? Why am I here? Yeah. What am I meant to do? I mean, like, why am I here? What is my purpose? God, why did you create me in 2020? Like, in this generation, why wasn't I back at the time of Jesus? That would have been easy to believe, man. There he is. <laughs> right? We need to know those questions, gentlemen. But the first, you can't get the, the second two until you get your identity. Right. This is what we're missing. Oh, we hear it all day long, right? You're a son of God. When I said, you know, what's the answer? You're all like, oh, I, I'll pass it. Son of God. That's me. You're son of God. Yeah, but do you live like it? Thank you. Being honest. No. Your life doesn't resemble son of God, because if it did, you'd be walking in boldness, anointed with fire. Not your strength. His. You'd be like Paul. Like the same Paul, man. That guy got his identity, didn't he? Mm -hmm. And he felt he was the worst of them all. Can you imagine carrying all that guilt of like torturing and killing all those Christians? And now you've got to go out and lead those very Christians? What about God doing a mind death on them? <laughs> God's plans are higher than ours. But he was the right guy. Because he could relate to the deepest. You're the right guy. You can relate from the pain. The hurt, but you got to get into them. All right, so I started doing Sunday school, spending time with God. Sunday school, co-founded uh, Society of St. Joseph, which was for Christian men. 200 businessmen started showing up at our church every Tuesday morning at 6 a.m. Would you say there's a hunger there? There's a hunger in this room. You guys, like, mapped out this whole place to get to us. <laughs> 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 I don't know where we are, man. <laughs> I see like a kid playing out there with a dog. <laughs> All right? There's something hungry inside of you. God wants to feed you. All right? Um, uh, fed the homeless. We did all this stuff, right? I got busy for God. Which is another way of what? It's another control. Uh, and then avoidance to go in and do the work. 